I graduated the Berlin School back in 2012. Gold class seven. Yes, I know I'm, I'm old. Um, I'll speak more, more about that experience uh, later. But I do remember one module in particular. We called it the crying module. It was the summer of 2011. And the main class of that module was a course called Leader as Communicator. And part of the program was we were all asked to prepare a speech to deliver in front of our entire class about what happened to us before the age of 10 that shaped us into who we are today. No slides, no visual aids, just us in front of everyone, completely vulnerable. It was one of the most difficult things I've ever done. And I'm sure that, uh, you know, if I have Berliners here that have done that module, uh, understand what I mean. Um, it was a very difficult thing for me to do. And I never thought, honestly, that I would have to, that what I would share that day would actually become what I have built as my career purpose. I've been in the advertising industry for over three decades now. And I want to share with you a full introspective of who I am and how I got here. Let me take you on this journey. And um, you may see bits of yourselves in some of the passages that I uh, that have shaped me. And hopefully you can discover your own personal purpose as well. I know exactly how old I was when the bullying started. I was nine years old. You see, growing up gay in Latin America in the 1980s wasn't anything like it is today. To be honest, it isn't much better today either. For years, I struggled with my own self-acceptance, wondering what was wrong with me, hiding my true self from the ones that I loved, and trying really hard to change. My teenage years were a little complicated as well. There was uh, really no one to talk to. Uh, there were no hotlines to call, no school council to approach. There wasn't a thing that's Trevor Project anywhere. As I came to terms with my own identity, I was faced with a very complicated decision. I could either marry a woman and live a double life, as a lot of people do. I could become a priest. That was always an option, but really didn't want to go down that path. I could leave the country and try to find a life of my own. Or I could kill myself. Imagine being 14 years old and actually considering the option of ending your life. Thankfully, the 80s were a very prolific era for Hollywood. Movies like The Working Girl and The Secret of My Success showed really funny and entertaining stories of people who were faking it until they made it. Probably some of you remember, remember those. And I realized that in order to succeed, I had to pretend to be someone I wasn't. And I had to be the best at what I, at what I wanted to do so I wouldn't be discovered. I remember my first trip to New York. It was the most incredible thing. It was you know early 90s. The city was bustling. All the lights, all the sounds, all the music was really, like, really got to me. And I was like, I have to be here no matter what. I have to, I have to move here. As I said, I was born and raised in Costa Rica, a great place to be born, one of the most beautiful countries in the world with amazing people, and one of the five blue zones around the world. So people get to live very, very long time there. But again, being gay in a very small country, I always knew that I had to leave. So I started my path working with BBDO one of the most incredible and you know most awarded agencies around the world. I got my first job with them in Costa Rica. And I learned everything I know today about the power of creativity from them. One of the most incredible shops. And I also discovered the power and influence of the workplace uh, of the workplace bully, which I got to encounter many, many times throughout my years there. I spent over 20 years with them. It was great because I, I got to live and work in some of the vibrant market or the most vibrant markets in Latin America. I lived in Panama, I lived in Brazil, lived in Mexico City, I lived in Puerto Rico as well. But, but again, doing business as a gay man was not a really, that, that was nothing, nothing that would happen 
uh, very easily in those. Uh, I decided to get my MBA at the time. I figured that if I really wanted to advance my career, I needed to complete a master's program. And this is absolutely one of the most pivotal moments in my career. There is a before and after for me uh, by doing the Berlin School. The Berlin School not only opened the door for me to a larger global stage, I was able to you know, get to talk with incredible leaders from incredible agencies and really make amazing connections, but I also met incredibly talented people who today I consider some of my best friends. The program took me all over the world with modules in Berlin, New York, San Francisco, Tokyo, Shanghai, and it taught me a lot about the value of diversity and acceptance and it also pushed the boundaries of my own creative thinking. I am so proud to say today that I'm par part of the advisory board where I spent uh, a lot of time supporting uh, some of the Berlin School activities. Just recently, this past November, I attended with some of the uh, people in this in the, uh, the Dubai traveling module, which was designed for alumni, you know, focused mostly for uh, alumni, but also for people who are doing the program right now, and focused on Dubai as center of design and innovation. What an amazing experience that was, you know, a decade later to get to, you know, enjoy uh, the experience of, of the Berlin School. But that's a separate story. We can tell it some other time. I finally got to move to New York in 2010. My dream had come true. If you guys had seen The Devil Wars Prada, which is one of my favorite movies of all time, I was living my Andy Sachs story. Like, I was so excited to finally make it there and i got to work you know with some of the most incredible brands and the most creatively you know creative clients that bbdo uh had obviously sneakers was one of the the highlights of uh of my time there i got to work with you know some of the folks that created these ads uh, an amazing creative idea rooted in a universal human truth that exploded around the world we got to create 60 different versions of celebrities expressing their trait because they were <laughs> they were hungry um i also had the opportunity to you know move to san francisco where i got to lead the visa uh business for bbdo we had just won the account from tbwa without a pitch and we had to stand up a team to service the account around the world of a hundred and you know a hundred plus people within a very short period of time a really, a really um, amazing, uh, but a really tough one as well. I was working nonstop, 24-7, Saturdays, Sundays, 5 a.m. in the morning, getting on calls with New York, or you know, 7 o'clock, 8 o'clock at night uh, with with, uh, uh, with Asia. In, you know, in a, to make the business work better, because my team was sitting in New York, I moved again to, uh, to New York to try to make things better. And I have to say that it was one of those times when it was actually the first time where I was faced with, instead of you know being the Andy Sachs of, of the movie, I was becoming. And it was a pivotal moment also in, in, in my life because I was so much to work that my personal relationships were starting to suffer. I was not connecting with friends. I was married at the time and my marriage was failing to the point that we ended up, you know, splitting up and getting getting divorced. I moved back to San Francisco. I finally decided to leave BBDO. I thought this is this is not for me. Uh, I I want to, I wanted to also the digital world that I moved to Wonderman, um, developed some incredible apps and websites for really incredible clients like Nike um, and in Starbucks. And finally met uh, my husband uh, today, uh, Rick. This is this is him and I. The first photo, the first photo we took uh, together, and this is five years later when we got uh, married in Lake Como. I joke a lot uh, with him because I show him these photos back and forth, and I I usually say, you know, I kind of I think I look younger now than when I looked when I first met him. Right? You see it? I think I see it. Anyway, he hates me when I say that. Together, together we have built an incredible life and we support many LGBTQ organizations, uh, the Horizons Foundation, who champions multiple issues around equality, and the Laurel Foundation, who does incredible work, giving trans kids the opportunity to have a summer camp experience 
without the fear of being bullied and rejected. We also support another organization in my home country in Costa Rica. It's called Casa Rara, which means weird house, which takes in LGBTQ youth that have been kicked out of their homes and have nowhere to go. This has really become a true passion um, of ours. And this is where I, you know, I, I one of my key uh, uh, tenets in how I run my life today is try to be the person you wish when you were younger. And, and obviously, this is a way of doing that and giving giving a little bit back. I'm a huge dog fan. This is Mini Cooper. Uh, he has his own Instagram account. You can follow him, Dachshunds365. He has about 58,000 followers now. And I'm hoping at some point that I'll get to monetize that and finally be able to quit the advertising business. So give him give him a follow. He of a... You know, I've had Dachshunds for 17 years, and he has some big shoes to fill with my old uh, Horacio and Leopoldo, who I love. They both passed away, so I um, miss them a lot. Anyway, along came the opportunity to move to New York again back in 2017, a unique opportunity to stand up and build Verizon's in-house agency. After a very long process of strategy, Verizon wanted to reduce the amount of um, agencies that they work with, and they wanted to bring some of that work in-house. And we decided to bring uh, in-house everything that was a Verizon-owned channel, starting from the website, the app, all social media. We did all lifestyle photography and and, and brand photography, all the look and feel, um, we did all the de- store design. So we had uh, uh, interior designers as, as part of our team designing everything from, you know, the the tiles, the walls, you know, the, the light fixtures, everything and all the communication that lived inside the store. We also created some of the most incredible experiential um, events for, for Super Bowl and for other big uh, here in the U.S. After... Two and a half years working with them, we ended up getting you know, recognition within the the creative space, which is obviously uh, a great way of attracting uh, great talent. A wonderful experience, great, really smart people, very difficult organization. If we talk about a Miranda Priestly, oh my God, uh, Verizon takes takes the cake as one of the most you know difficult, bully driven organizations where people reacted. Towards fear rather than than kindness. So, wasn't really enjoyed that, and decided to move back to uh, San Francisco, where my husband was, uh, you know, was living. We were doing from San Francisco to New York during those uh, two and a half years, which was very very hard. And I finally joined um, Sir Sorrell's newest venture, which was uh, Media Monks, the biggest production company in the world that wanted to become an agency. I was responsible for running the global in-housing practice, uh, and I was part of the team that created the uh, Pride Monks, which was the community group for LGBTQ within within our organization. Everything was going great. We grew from 300 people to 9,000 in uh, in a span of two and a half years. And um, there it was, uh, Miranda, Polici- Miranda Priestley coming out again. Wasn't really enjoying um, my time, uh, Media Monks didn't really want to become an agency. They wanted to stay being a, a production company. So I got the opportunity to join where I work today, which is Copper Giants, uh, a wonderful, incredible team, the in house agency for Liberty Mutual Insurance. You probably have not heard much about them, especially because we're not in, uh, in, in Europe. It's one of the top. Uh, in insurance in in the U.S., a very very creative and competitive category. We get to do everything from you know social to emails to full blown TV, uh, which doesn't happen often within the in house space. And I have to say that I get to work with some of the most incredibly kind and wonderful people uh, in the industry. These are people that have worked in all of the big agencies, in all of the bigger organizations, and just like me, decided that you know they didn't want to you know be another Miranda Priestley. So we 
we created this team and we call it the anti agency because our our focus is to be out there to do the current client agency working relationship and replace it with something radical joy together we have built and transformed brands to do well financially but also do good in the world and here's the big catch even though we are an in-house agency we also take on external clients which is unique within within the market we think that this gives us a, a great opportunity for creatives to touch you know different categories and different things and it helps us attract and retain great talent you see our values here and yes there is the word asshole in this slide uh as you look at uh, our, our values you, you you will find what the things that we care about and we don't work with assholes so and, and we are not assholes and we don't them so that's a big uh, a big focus of, of, of um like i said we support the laurel foundation so we we are definitely trying to work with companies that are trying to do better in the in the world uh, Bridge My Return is another another client that we work with. They actually help veterans get jobs outside of the military once they uh, they leave. So again, the focus is trying to bring you know joy back into advertising and working with companies and brands that want to do good in the world. That's our space. That's our niche. That's what we want to do. So all of that. Um, just to get to you know what what have I really learned you know, throughout all of time and throughout my my career? First of all, guys, what well, we does not open heart surgery. Like I really can't imagine like being in front of an operating table and having someone you know heart open. Like I would never be able to to you know do that. But we do have the power to change the world. We we are involved in communications strategies that help people or should uh take people to their to their next level i also i've all that you can be being the bully right this is this is the topic of of this talk kindness will get you farther in life always in your career with your family in your relationships putting kindness first will get you farther like i said creativity can make the world a better place uh you want to create work that inspires people, work that makes the world a happier, safer, kinder, and more equitable place to live. I'm sure a lot of you will agree uh, that the agency world has lots, lost its joy, especially for those of us who've been around uh, for a while. There's just too much chaos right now, driven by mergers, unprofitability, bad cultures, and really exhausted talent from nonstop bitching like every time, every single day. The industry deserves better, and we as, as professionals deserve better. Eh. I wanted to throw out a a, uh, a poll. I, I probably can't see faces, but, um, but I would love for you to guys to a little bit in what percentage of employees worldwide are not engaged at work, and what do you think that number is? Is it under 20%? 20 to 40, 40 to 60, 60 to 80, lifting over 80%. The guy, team, if you were in Dubai, you can't answer this question because you know, you know the answer. 85% of employees worldwide are not engaged at work. This is mind boggling. Here's another one. What percentage of employees are actively looking for a new job or watching openings? Same split, A, B, C, D. Think about your number. Here's the big reveal. 51% are actively looking for a job or watching openings. Think about this. Half of your employees are using your Wi-Fi at the company in your work computer, actively looking for a job or watching uh, an opening. So where does that leave us? Where does that, how do, what does that show us about, you know, loyalty and, um, and opportunity? And here's one thing I've learned. People are loyal to people. They are not loyal to organizations. I have in my mind five people or 10 people that I would die for. Like I would go to battle with them at uh, any time of the day, regardless of what organization they're in. Think about that as a leader. Like 
who will follow you to battle if you were at a different uh, organization? So on the topic, again, of, of leading with kindness, a few thoughts as I, as I close uh, my talk. What makes it is your superpower. Embrace your demons. Diversity is not only the right thing to do, it is good for business. Encourage a safe environment for people to shine. Be unwavering in your purpose. As I showed you, our purpose at Copper Giants is to bring joy back into advertising. Walk the talk. Be relentless in what you believe in. Embrace what you and your team stand for and never veer away from it. If your team doesn't believe in your purpose, you don't have one. So keep being unwavering in your purpose. Culture is everything, especially today. Culture, culture is built around the worst behaviors leaders are willing to tolerate. Think about that one a little bit. Model the right behavior you want from others every single day. This is an interesting one. Look for empathy when recruiting. There's a really nice story about how Southwest, a, um, a low-budget uh, airline here in the U.S., recruits for talent. Apparently, the story goes that you know when they're recruiting for people that are going to be customer-facing employees, they bring them all in a room and they have they ask everyone to stand up and to the 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 group and say something about the moment that they have ever gone through. Like, oh my God, I was you know one day you know walking into party and then I slipped and I fell and everybody laughed. So, and, and what they look for is look for the helpers, like the people that did not laugh when they were telling that story the people that came up to the speaker and said, were you okay? Oh my God, that must've been so hard for you. Those are the people that they, that they hire. Those are the people that bring it to their organization. The ones that show empathy, good people are good business. You want to spot out the helpers, the ones who lean, who lean in and care. Lastly, always be curious. Be passionate about finding new ways to create a new connection with people. I've always said this. You can learn as much from someone who's been in the business for 25 years than from someone who's 25, year, 25 years old. And I always quote um, Meta's you know, Facebook when he did it. Now it's Meta. This, this rallying cry of, we are always 1% done, always think that way. You have to be always curious and never never give up on learning. As I close, um, I, I told you where, you know, where I've been in my life. And, and to me, the perfect scenario of where I would see myself, uh, you know, in the next, uh, the next 20 years, would probably look surrounded by dachshunds walking them uh, on the park. So... No big dreams. This is this to me would be absolute happiness and content.